everyone. Um, welcome. Our presentation is on College Career Night events. My name is Diana Sabella. My name is Francisco de los Santos. My name is Misa Molina. Victoria Escalante. Um, so for our presentation, we're focusing on middle school. Um, our setting for our presentation would be either in a multi-purpose room or in an auditorium or possibly the library. Um, and these are some of the topics that we're going to be covering. So for the first part that we're going to be covering today would be the A through G requirements that the majority of universities do look at, um, specifically the California State University system and the University of California system utilizes the A through Gs in order for their eligibility purposes. Um, it is very important for students and parents to understand the ins and outs of it, as the majority of these classes are college prep, honors, AP, and IB courses are offered through your schools. Um, if you're unsure if, what kind of courses are offered at your school, you would want to utilize the UC doorways, which is um, linked up on the presentation. Next slide, please. To go a little further deep into the A through Gs, um, they are specific with each category being a different kind of discipline. Um, just a heads up, they are covered through ninth through 12th grade. So it will be every single year you are in high school, um, these courses will be utilized for eligibility purposes. Institutions being the CSU and the UC, they will calculate the GPA that you do receive from these kind of courses um, the summer of your ninth grade year all the way till the summer of your 11th grade year. Just to let you know, though, that does not mean that you should not care about your academics when you are in high school, um, specifically ninth grade or 12th grade, because it is a holistic approach that they use. So they do want to see that you're at least trying all four years, but they do only use the GPA from the summer of ninth grade to the summer of 11th grade. So specifically, um, category A, it is history. Typically, that could be a form of US history, world history, or if you're taking a higher level of history, AP US, AP world, um, you do need at least two years in order to be eligible. For English, you do need all four years. Um, usually it's a CP class, so it could be English 9, 10, 11, 12 CP. Um, they do offer IB and AP courses as well, such as AP Lang and AP Literature. When we come to mathematics, that is categorized as C. So you do need three years of this. Um, that could be from Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. If the school you go to, they utilize Common Core. Um, that would be like Math 1, Math 2, Math 3. The fourth year, it is highly recommended. Typically for CSUs, it is recommended. For UCs, um, it is highly encouraged. And specifically, if you have a certain kind of major or career you want to go into that emphasizes with this pathway of mathematics, like STEM, then you would want to take into consideration the fourth year. Usually they have like AP Statistics, AP Calc, or Math Analysis. Then we go into letter D, which is Lab Sciences. Um, you do need a biological and a physical science class. So that could be biology, physics, chemistry, um, even environmental science accounts. A third year, it is recommended. And once again, if it's something around the kind of coursework you wanna to go to, kind of career like STEM, or biology, you would want to take more than the two years that you need. Then we go into E, so foreign language. That could be Spanish. Um, maybe your school offers Chinese, French, um, anything along those lines. So you would need two years at the bare minimum. Three years, it is recommended. Some schools, they even offer fourth year. So if you really want to be competitive, you can always do that as well. Then for F is visual and performing arts. So that could be any like band class, chorus, art, um, dance, 
depending once again if it's uh, A through G through the UC doorways from your school. If it's classified as F, they count and you only need one year of that. And then last but not least, you have G, which is college prep electives. Um, typically, it could be anything from like psychology, CP, AP psychology, um, economics sometimes counts for it. It really depends on the school you go to, but you do only need one year of that. And just to let you know, so these courses, um, you do need to at least receive a C or better for them to count. If you do end up getting anything less than a C minus in these classes, you will need to retake them. So they could be for eligibility purposes. Next slide, please. Okay, so you might ask yourself, um, what are these different types of courses? Well, they all have different kinds of difficulty levels. Um, for you parents, you might want to talk to your students about the kind of classes that they're taking and the workload that they're going to have. Um, however, as students, you also want to take some sort of leadership and picking your courses. So these are like the main four different types of classes that are offered that are usually college prep and go with A through Gs. So first one would be AP classes, which stand for advanced placement. Um, you do get an extra GPA boost. So for example, if you get a B in the class, you technically get an A um, based on the GPA. Um, same thing goes for IB courses and certain honors courses. Um, not all honors courses would give you that extra GPA boost, but they would be classified as honors on your transcript. So depending on which schools you want to apply to, they will see that you took an honors course instead of a regular course. Um, with that, there are accelerated pathways, which means that you might learn a little bit more um, than the usual student in the regular classroom. And it's supposed to help you gain more content and learn more methods of understanding what you're doing and possibly taking an advanced course later on quicker than another person at your school. Next slide, please. So if you feel like maybe you also want to embark or try to take college classes, um, by all means, it is possible. At your high school, you would want to talk to your college counselor or your counselor, depending if there isn't a college counselor at your school. And you would want to ask them if you could do dual enrollment. So what this means is you will be taking college courses while in high school usually after school um, or online, and you could possibly earn college credit by passing the class. So the difference between an AP and IB and an actual college class is that the AP class and the IB class, you take a test at the end of the year, and if you pass it with three, four, or five, you get college credit. However, um, when you do take a college class and you at least get a C or better, you automatically get the credit. So you won't take a test, but you will be taking the actual class and doing the assignments. Um, a good part about this is if you do take up roughly about five college classes, um, it does equal to about half a year of undergraduate studies. So if, if you know that you want to go to a university afterwards, um, this would be really good for you, especially if your parents are making um middle class income since they might have to pay out of pocket in some instances. So it's best for you to consider taking college classes ahead of time. So it won't be as costly in the future. Next slide, please. Um, a valuable tool that you could always use in regards to A through Gs would be the A through G course management. It is verified through the UC system. So they are the ones that have created this website and it is to manage the amount of classes you've taken at your high school to see if you are qualified to possibly attend a UC or a CSU. So if you are not very well with um, creating your own like templates or your own plans, um, you can always use this to help you, guide you and possibly allow you to get to that path of going to UC or a CSU. Next slide. I'll be discussing on the career and technical program uh, exploration tools. 
Um, I'd like to mention that it's never too early to start the exploration process, uh, especially like for middle schoolers. It's a great way to get a head start on what um, what your interests are. And um, a good helpful tool for this could be the career assessments uh, websites such as California uh, Career Zone, Career One Stop, and ONET. Um, they can help you identify uh, your interests, abilities, and personality traits. And um, it's, it's extremely beneficial to students because it helps them uh, make the decisions for uh, high school courses, as Misael mentioned, uh, AP courses and uh, what what route they uh, they would like to pursue. Um, and it would help them also understand the variety of fields and uh, expectations, uh, academic expectations from uh, different programs, universities, UCs, CSUs, and as well as the job market and uh, employment trends which can also be extremely beneficial for students to see what um, what our, uh, their interests are and what could help them um, in the future as far as like career-wise. Next slide, please. Um, planning for your future and how to pay for college. There are uh, many financial uh, aid options that can help you achieve your goals, such as grants, uh, Cal grants, that do not require to be uh, paid back. Scholarships, such as um, some websites that are helpful for this, include scholarship.com, fastweb.com, uh, work study programs, and uh, federal student loans, which do need to be paid back with some interest. But these are some of the options that uh, you can take in order to um, enroll into college and pay for your education. Uh, some requirements to be eligible include uh, being enrolled well in the college program that is actually eligible to be um, to receive this type of financial help. Uh, you must meet certain GPA requirements when graduating high school, a minimum number of units or credits enrolled in the college program, or also uh, the California Dream Act. Next slide, please. Okay, so colleges and choosing the right one. So everybody's educational plan will differ and several pathways can lead to the same result. So it doesn't matter if you do community college or you do four-year college, they can potentially lead to the same result. Um, however, when considering higher education, it is essential to remember that everyone's needs will be different and you should choose a path that fits your needs and goals. Um, some things to consider when choosing a college, um, Start with your career goal. What is it that you plan on doing, um, your degree program, and start looking into schools that might be offering those degree programs, possibly creating a list um, of schools that you might be interested in. Um, location is also important. Um, if you're planning to stay close to home, um, that might be also um, a factor to consider. Um, the cost of the school, um, would also be important um, when creating this list. Um, and extracurricular activities, if there's anything that you might be interesting and in that perhaps that you might want to participate in or interested in doing, or uh, maybe you don't know if you might want to do it, but it's an option for you. Um, post high school options for students going into the workforce after high school. So after high school, you can choose from a variety of different paths that may be that be uh, fit for students. Um, these would be for students that are not interested in going right into college. Um, there's different paths that students can take. Um, for instance, job fairs might be great for students to start off with. Um, this is an opportunity for students to connect with um, various employers. Um, there's career technical education. So career technical education provides um, certificates and programs for students who want to have some kind of uh, quick training. Um, typically, these would be between 12 months to 18 months, and then students would gain knowledge um, and skills to go right into the workforce after that. Um, some of these programs could be in um, arts, technology, finance, um, education, training, uh, marketing. Um, this could also be in um, health services and food services. Another option for students would be 
um, the military program. Um, sometimes students join the military um, and once they're in, they can decide if they want to use their GI Bill, which would cover their four-year university. Another plan for students who want to start their uh, workforce experience would be a tech trade school. So tech trade schools are kind of similar to career tech education. So these courses will train the students um, in careers such as healthcare, technology, legal services, um, and other professional traits. Um, and then job corps. So job corps is job training programs. So if students want to um, bypass college and go right into the workforce. Well, most students will require some kind of former training or prior training before starting a career. So these programs would support the students who need those skills and that knowledge to be able to create a resume and apply for those jobs that are, are available. If you're interested in pursuing a degree from a four-year college or university, you should consider preparing for writing requirements during the application process. Many four-year colleges continue to require that first-year applicants submit an essay or what's referred to as a personal statement. Take the opportunity to receive online training on how to prepare an essay that describes you, your unique interests, passions, and career goals. The following online writing resources are available to help you create an essay that reflects who you are and how you would like to contribute to your chosen educational field. Next slide. Like many who decide to enter the workforce after high school, rather than take the route of a college or university, you may be wondering how to go about pursuing your chosen career path. Luckily, there are many online resources available to help you find internships and career shadowings that will help you gain real life experience with an employer that is currently in your chosen career field and may also be able to offer you a position once you've completed your internship program. The following online internship promotions are examples of the types of programs that are located within the San Diego County and cover a range of interests that may be motivating to you and would be something that you would want to pursue. That's it for our presentation. Thank you. Okay, guys.